Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new week and a new edition of Houston Sports Weekly, our weekly podcast here on KPRC 2 Plus and click2houston.com. We do it each and every Friday for you to listen to, perhaps in the car. You can also watch it as well because we are video. And uh, hey, coming up, a uh, big show today. We've got second segment. Ari is going to talk, uh, Ari Alexander is going to talk with a fantasy football league expert about building your fantasy league team for the NFL because that's going to start pretty soon um, as well. But this first segment, pleasure to be joined by the man right there in the other side of the box. That would be our Texans insider for ClickToHouston.com. He covers the NFL for many, many years, and uh, nobody better on the Texans beat than Aaron Wilson. Uh, Aaron, thanks for hanging out for a few minutes. Uh, We're just over a week out, man. We're getting close. It's been a busy week for the Texans, and uh, cut down after the uh, game against the New Orleans Saints. The roster had to be pared down. I know that's kept yeah, kept you busy over the last few days. Absolutely, Randy. Yeah, thank you. It's been very busy, and I think it's, you know, the majority of the moves now, they're all done with that, including today, placing some injured guys on the injured reserve list, meaning they'll miss at least the first four games. So their projected starting center, Juice Scruggs, we've known for a while, reported yeah. that Juice would at least miss the Ravens game. It was a two- to four-week injury, and that put him in the timeline of needing to be on injured reserve. And Cameron Johnston, their punter, he strained his calf, and he's also out for about the same amount of time, sort of a three- to four-week injury. And so they had to sign another punter, Ty Zentner, formerly of the Eagles, to fill in. So you're down those guys, but you're already mm. now down Kenyon Green. And that's probably the headline of the week yeah. that Kenyon Green will miss the entire season. Uh, we reported this after the Saints game that he would need shoulder surgery. He has torn his labrum completely. Uh, so it's a four to six month recovery for Kenyon. And it's been hard luck for Kenyon. He has now had three surgeries since entering the NFL two wow. on his knee, one on his shoulder. And, you know, I know it's been alluded to some personal issues. Those are uh, private, you know, of a family matter. Uh, but, you know, Kenyon is in good spirits, I'm told. And he's mm-hmm. just faced the normal amount of, obviously, uh, you know, this is a upsetting situation because he loves football. Uh, he's a local guy from Atascacita High School and was an All-American for the Aggies at the Texas A&M. And so, yeah, it's tough on him, a tough time oh. for this Second-year players now at a career crossroads. I want to let's talk about before we talk about some other cuts that were made this past week. Uh, I want to follow up on on Kenyon Green. That's getting a lot of attention, Aaron, as you well know. Uh, last year's first-round pick, he uh, played last year, didn't really wow very many people. And you, you mentioned the off-season, he had the coming off the knee surgery. I mean. What kind of look does just give the Texans the fact they – not that he can't become a great player, but next year all of a sudden is going to be a big year for Kenyon Green to prove that he can be productive in the NFL. Right. Randy, the pressure was already on the Texans for drafting him at 15th overall. And basically, instead of moving back to 20, they decided to stay at 15, not trade back, and pick Kenyon. And they put a lot of faith in him, Lovey Smith, had formed a very strong relationship with Henry Green, Kenyon's father, and thought this was the way to go. I'm going to go with Kenyon and, you know, Nick Casario. They all signed off on it. And instead of Tyler Lindenbaum, who's a center for the Baltimore Ravens, that's having some very early success in the NFL, but has short arms. Kenyon more of the prototype for size, one of the reasons that they picked him. Yeah. And you look at Kenyon now, though, what you're seeing is, yes, there's been some weight issues, there's been some health issues. I would say the health issues are more important and the technique issues on the field more so than his conditioning. Uh, I mean, I remember when he came out to camp, I mean, a lot of us were talking like, man, he just does not look like he's in football shape. Right. I think his stamina and energy is not quite the same as the other guys, but has he made strides in that area this offseason? Yes, he did work hard. He did improve. And I think because everybody kind of looks at things like, black and white issue, not gray. I would say he fell into more of the gray area for conditioning, but he had a longer way to go than these other guys that were in better shape than him. And some of his conditioning is due to unavailability to work out right? because he's been rehabbing, because he's had knee surgeries. 
plural surgeries and now he's got the shoulder issue they could have tried to repair the partial tear back in may when it was first diagnosed they opted not to and that didn't necessarily mean that he was going to be a time bomb but the decision was made to try to go forward with him and put him out there and then obviously you know he completely tore it he went through the entire camp <laughs> in a lot of contact situations that it held up and it didn't hold up against Brian Brzee. He gives up the sack and he tears the labor completely. The MRI reveals. So now yeah. Kenyon. So he's going to be out a while. Surgery. Yep, absolutely. Yep. All right. Uh, I want to dive in real quick. Just uh, key names that maybe surprise you. Give me two or three names. Uh, we don't have to go through the whole list of who got cut, but just three, two or three names that stood out to you that say it's like, well, okay, that was a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Anybody stand out to you? Desmond King was the top surprise because he was their starting nickel, and they have a, you know, really a void there at the nickel position where they're going to try with Tavier Thomas and with uh, Graylin Arnold cross training between safety and nickel. So Desmond has been an All Pro before and has had some, you know, big plays for this team, but they felt like he didn't fit their scheme. And I know he's thrilled to be a Steeler. He signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a one-year deal, so he's already got a new job. He was probably the number one surprise. We we broke that story, and I had heard last week that they were somewhat unhappy with him. I was going to ask you, what, what cost him the uh, making this team, do you think? I, I think fit, I think a little bit, just mm -hmm. their attitude or, or their perception of his attitude. And he was more of a cover two player, a better fit for Lovey Smith's defense Got than Michael Ryan's defense. So that one, Jacob Martin, a pass rusher that I thought played well, started one of the games. Yeah, fill, so fill, Jacob, fill us in on Jacob real fast, if you don't mind, just the update. It was uh, was released, but then he hooked on quickly, right? Right. He's now a cold. He signed his contract today and talking with Jacob and talking with Jacob's camp. Yeah, he's thrilled. He'll see them in week two, and so he'll do everything he can, I'm sure, to make the Texans regret that roster decision. He was offered a chance to return, but not for the 53-man. He was offered a practice squad spot, but instead he'll be with the Colts. So Jacob Martin gets a new home, and – yeah, I thought mm -hmm. he played well in the preseason, but they made it they went in a different direction. Remember, they did draft a defensive end, Dylan Horton. Christian Kirksey's only a mild surprise because financially it makes all the sense in the world, but just in the sense that he was a team captain, Walter Payton finalist, and they have an injury situation where they probably could use him right now. Blake Cashman, the starting strong side linebacker, is still out with a hamstring. I'm told he's aggravated the hamstring. Put a little news here on into our podcast that he has re-aggravated it. That happened yesterday. So now wow. you don't have Blake Cashman. A lot of injuries, man. Yeah. yeah, a lot of injuries. So Christian uh, you know, probably could have used him, but he's now a Buffalo Bill. He signed with their practice squad. He'll eventually be on their active roster. I know he was hurt, but you know, he's a good leader and productive football player. And then after that, you know, Steven Sims, who, you know, we both uh, went to his camp this summer, right. Travis High School. He's now on the practice squad off of the 53-man roster. But, you know, he was a really good return man in the preseason. So I wouldn't I be shocked. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up on the active roster at some point. But uh, you've got uh, about four or five minutes here, four minutes or so. Uh, we'll talk with Aaron Wilson, our Texans insider for ClickToHouston.com. Uh, he's been covering the NFL for a very long time. These last few minutes of this segment, Aaron, uh, they made the decision after that Saints game, uh, worst kept secret in the NFL on C.J. Stroud, uh, D'Amico Ryan's after the game, making it official that he is the starting quarterback. Uh, it seems like he's won over the locker room with the, what he's brought to the table and the way he's grasped things. Uh, still limited playing time in the preseason, except for uh, game number two. I guess he's played more the first half. Um, has he done enough, you think, to feel comfortable going into that opener? Yeah, I believe so. You think about the accuracy, which at times is, is right on the money. You know, he's thrown some good footballs. I think that, you know, them having him earn the job instead of just handing it to him and him coming off of a encouraging preseason performance where, yeah. you know, some of those throws, including the touchdown, that was a good play-action fake, very slick fake to Damian Pierce. And if you don't have that kind of running back, obviously no one respects the fake. But he threw a nice catchable pass to Nico Collins, and Nico should have had that sideline throw. Mm -hmm. That was on the money as well, but it was knocked away. Nico probably could have gotten that one. I look at CJ, and I think he's an ascending young player that's had a great attitude, that players respect, 
That's all you could ask for from a rookie quarterback. Yes, he'll make some mistakes. They will not be the end of the world. Right. This is a very tough environment he's heading into. The Ravens uh, have a top five defense, and they have a you know big atmosphere there at their stadium. But I think that CJ, he's poised. I think he's built for games like this one. And yes, there's going to be some adversity because your offensive line, you don't have your top five guys. So it's going to be some of a makeshift line, and yeah, I uh, look at uh, you know whether you know how they'll go with that. But yeah, I think CJ is ready. All right, only got about 90 seconds here, Aaron. Uh, quick hits, uh, rapid fire here. Tank Dell, big impact on this offense. Can he lead the team in receptions? I don't think he'll be the volume guy. I think he'll lead the team in average per catch and yards after the catch. I kind of think Schultz is going to be the, wind up being the leader in receptions. Agree with you wholeheartedly. All right, uh, and then you got the running game, Damian Pierce. What do you think out of him year two? thousand yards i don't know if he gets pro bowl but i look for him to have a thousand rushing yards and about seven or eight touchdown runs all right and sack total what's your over under on will anderson jr <laughs> i'll put will can he get to eight sacks. eight sacks eight sacks yeah i think that's reasonable think every other game he's gonna have a sack i think he's that good yeah and then man i think that's a breakout year and then uh, look out next year and you're number two i think for a guy like uh, will anderson jr Aaron, good stuff, man. Um, we're we're a little over a week out as this drops on Friday, you know, when people are listening and watching. But uh, we're we're hitting uh, game week in the National Football League. I know it's going to be a, a big deal for the Texans next week as they count down uh, to their trip to Baltimore, take on the Ravens uh, a week from Sunday. As always, great insight. Look forward to your content every day there from uh, your coverage of the Texans on ClickToHouston.com. Man, we'll talk to you very very soon, man. Thanks, Randy. All right, that is Aaron Wilson, our Texans insider for Click2Houston.com and uh, KPRC2+. Plus. Also a uh, friend of the show for Sports Sunday as well. We're going to have him on maybe even this Sunday if he's available. Aaron, appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon, man. Talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, so we're going to take a break here on Houston Sports Weekly. When we come back, I'll hand it over to Ari Alexander. He'll get you ready. Special guest talking how to build your fantasy football league team when – Houston Sports Weekly continues. Welcome back to Houston Sports Weekly, KPRC 2's weekly sports podcast. We've got a special guest this week. We're joined by Scott Barrett, the CEO of FantasyPoints.com. Scott is a fantasy football expert. Uh, I know it's getting a little late as we get to start fantasy football and NFL football season, but a lot of you guys, myself included, have drafts coming up. So we have literally an expert to help. Scott, thank you for joining Thanks for having me, Ari. So let's uh, let's get into the first round. Uh, we talked about this a little bit on Sports Sunday, but you're pro receiver and not running back, which kind of goes counter to uh, fantasy football theory going back 30, 40 years when uh, nerds started this. Yeah, so I'm I'm typically arguing in favor of running backs over wide receivers. This season is different, and listen, every season is its own unique special snowflake. And I'm, yeah, my top four picks are wide receivers. It's in order, uh, Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, then Christian McCaffrey, then Austin Eckler. And the big reason why is I am seeing a lot of value in round four, round five, round six of your drafts for running backs that typically isn't there. So that makes me feel a lot better about drafting a wide receiver in round one. But it's also just you can poke holes in just about all of the top 10, top 15 running backs, major holes. Like I love Christian McCaffrey. I love Austin Eckler, but they're both on the precipice of the age cliff, which is not good for running backs. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, his usage took a major hit when Elijah Mitchell was healthy last season. Austin Eckler, you worry a little bit with the new offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore. Maybe he reins in some of those check down receptions, which are such a cheat code in PPR leagues. Yeah, there's also a couple uh, running backs, high-ranked receivers you're not a fan of, which happen to be two of my favorite guys. You don't like C.D. Lamb, who's a big friend of the program. You don't like B. John Robinson, who's a friend of the program. What about those two players from a fantasy standpoint uh, Don't that you don't like? Yeah, of course, I don't not like them. I love them. They're incredible talents. Bijan <laughs> is one of the best running back prospects to ever come out. 
Uh, the issue I have is like you're drafting him over Nick Chubb. I don't know why you would draft him over Nick Chubb. Uh, Chubb has been every single season a mid-range RB1, you know, something like RB6 by fantasy points per game. That's despite seeding like 45% of the snaps to Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt is no longer there. Their running back coach, Stump Mitchell, is saying he could potentially – uh, get 1,000 receiving yards this year. That's not going to happen. Just because it's just like the the chance that you know he he's not BSing and like he could be an every down player this season uh, means yeah he's a no brainer over Bijan Robinson. Where you don't know whether or not Arthur Smith wants Tyler Algier to work in or Cordarel Patterson to catch passes. And then with Lamb, it's the big thing is like why would I draft him when I could just draft Keenan Allen two rounds later? The big thing there is Kellen Moore left Dallas to go to the Chargers. Kellen Moore is going to bring with him a very aggressive, pass-heavy offense that runs at a really fast pace. Uh, He said that Keenan Allen is now going to be his new CeeDee Lamb. Justin Herbert, a great quarterback. But meanwhile, going back to Dallas, is why was Kellen Moore fired? He was fired because Mike McCarthy said, yeah, we... uh, he was running up the scoreboard too much when I just wanted him to run the damn ball so I could rest my defense. That's not good for a pass catcher. When you're dra- drafting a wide receiver, that's not what you want to hear. So uh, it's just at cost. Uh, I don't really like those players as much as some other names. There's also an article that you write every year. It's called My Guys, where you pick a handful of players that you're going to want to have on every single one of your fantasy teams. So let's run through some of your guys. Who am I Who am I targeting if I'm you? Yeah, Christian Watson is a big one. Uh, he led all wide receivers in fantasy points per route run last season. That's a crazy stat. Just about everyone in the top 12 is being drafted round one or round two. You can get him round four. Uh, when he, from week 10 on, that's when he first started to get full-time usage, uh, he ranked ninth in fantasy points per game. Historically great numbers by yards per route run, uh, touchdown adjusted yards per route run. So just like extremely efficient on a per route basis. Uh, even more so than players in the same draft class like Chris Olave, like Garrett Wilson, who again are being drafted multiple rounds higher. So Christian Watson is definitely one of those players uh, at the tight end position. I love Darren Waller. I do not want to leave a draft without Darren Waller. I just think he has fantasy wide receiver one potential, and that's massive when you have that tight end designation. In fantasy football, Tight end is basically like, okay, Travis Kelsey, an oligarch ruling over a a huge number of peasants where they're kind of all the same. Maybe you could argue Mark Andrews is in that tier. Maybe TJ Hawkinson. George Kittle. uh, Not not this year. Maybe maybe the last few years. Uh, But Darren Waller, for sure, I think he has massive, massive upside. At a bare minimum, he's the Giants wide receiver one. He's the best wide receiver one Daniel Jones has ever had. Coming out of training camp, you know, vibes have been spectacular. He's apparently uh, totaled up 1.5 times as many receptions as any other receiver on the team. Clearly Daniel Jones guy. So, uh, so long as he stays healthy, uh, low risk, very high reward. Let's go deep sleepers because a lot of the time that is how you can win your league is getting these guys 12, 13, 14th round. Uh, who do you like for a deep sleeper? Yeah, Zach Moss is basically going undrafted in the far majority of leagues, but there's massive upside there if, you know, Jonathan Taylor gets traded or he continues to hold out. Right now, he's RB2 on the depth chart. So, you know, if, it, if this is the Le'Veon Bell, James Conner situation, you know, he could be a league winner. You know, the holdout extends the entire season or it's injury or trade, uh, and he's basically free. So uh, really like that. Justin Ross, this one's a little <laughs> trickier. Uh, he's free in just about every league. Uh, and he probably won't be a thing until like week seven at the earliest, but it's just the upside is massive. Uh, he had arguably the greatest season in college football history. He was supposed to be a top five draft pick, the next Larry Fitzgerald, and then obviously uh, really serious health con- uh, concerns, but he was cleared by Kansas City's doctors. He's looked like the best wide receiver on the field above MVS, above Justin Watson, above Sky Moore. If he just gets on the field, I think it's only a matter of when and not if before he's a fantasy league winner. If you're a Texans fan and you absolutely have to have a Texans player on your team, which the last few years I know has been kind of tough, who do you go for? Definitely Damian Pierce. For sure, Damian Pierce. Uh, Last season he finished as fantasy football's RB21 
in terms of fantasy points per game. You can draft him on NFL.com at RB21. So it's not practic- baking in any potential growth, but I'm seeing a lot of it based on preseason usage. He was an every down player with the first team offense. Meanwhile, last season, he was sort of a one trick pony, just the early down workhorse. He wasn't getting targets. Uh, he dropped a lot of weight this offseason. His reason why, he said, was because Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator, has him running all these routes, so many routes. And so you really want targets in fantasy football. In PPR league leagues, targets are worth 2.5 times as much as a carry. And so you just add that in. Yeah, he's definitely going to smash his RB21 ADP. So I'm a big fan of Tank Dell, uh, just both obviously personally, professionally, but also as a fantasy football player, why should or shouldn't I go after Tank Dell late late rounds? Yeah, I think in the late rounds, you've got nothing to lose. There's really minimal target competition. Uh, you look at, you know, Robert Woods, who's probably past his prime, Nico Collins, who's never done too much. Dalton Schultz, who I mentioned earlier, I have some concerns. But but Dell is an exciting player, an exciting prospect. Uh, over the last two seasons, he led all NCAA wide receivers in receptions, yards. He ranks second in touchdowns, plays much bigger than his size, uh, gets open at will, seemingly. We saw that at the Senior Bowl. We saw that in preseason. You saw that at training camp. Uh, so definitely a player to get excited about uh, in the last few rounds of your draft. So you don't like Dalton Schultz. I love Dalton Schultz, and here's why. I've, I went on a podcast uh, like three, four weeks ago and apparently hyped up Dalton Schultz so much that they turned it into a TikTok, which is insane. Shout out to uh, our guys at Pick 6 Podcast and Will Brinson. Uh, I don't know why there's a Dalton Schultz TikTok out there, but I guess there is now. Here's my reasoning. Mm-hmm. CJ Stroud's rookie quarterback. Rookie quarterbacks look for checkdowns. A lot of those checkdowns are either running backs or tight ends. Schultz coming off a great year where Dallas offense was sort of built around him. George Kittle was in that Shanahan offense, always had a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity. He was looked at for checkdowns. You had a great quarterback in C.J. Stroud. You have a wide receiver room that's not one of the better ones in the league. Why wouldn't Dalton Schultz get opportunities? Yeah, so, so my concern with him is uh, his usage this preseason was extremely unideal. Uh, when he was with Dallas, he was had a 90% route share, ranked top five in target share, like amazing opportunity. And then this preseason, and maybe I'm just overreacting to preseason, but this preseason was more of a committee. It, you know, his 90% route share dropped to, I don't know, 70% target share came down as well. I also just don't think he's that talented. I think he was really a function of the Kellen Moore offense. So like, why wouldn't I just draft Gerald Everett? And I am over him. Um, so that's, that's a big concern. Uh, and, Again, he, he, he hit free agency. This is a player who you know, ranked third or fourth in receptions over the last two seasons, and just no one really wanted him. You know, he's making less than Will Disley, less, less than C.J. Uzoma, less than Tyler Conklin, less than a number of other names. And so to me, that just indicates you know, uh, I don't see them being too invested in him, and then the preseason usage sort of backs that up. Well, for background tight ends, though, it's really hard because you kind of turn that into a TikTok. Yeah, well, yeah. So you talk about you love Travis Kelsey. Well, what if you don't get Travis Kelsey? You love Darren Waller. What if you don't get Waller or Kittle or Mark Andrews? Where do you turn to at that point? Other than I know you mentioned Gerald Everett, but what else? What else is there if you're looking at late late round tight ends? Yes, here's your tight end strategy. You can take Kelsey in round one. You can take Darren Waller in round five. Uh, if not, then you go quantity over quality. You you kind of go late round tight end. Chigo Conquo then becomes must draft. And then I would say draft either Gerald Everett, Tyler Higby, Greg Dulcich, who's ever cheapest. It's not really a big deal. And then just pay careful attention to what's available on waivers week one, week two, week three. You know, maybe Jake Ferguson uh, or... Uh, Trey McBride or Zach Ertz or one of the uh, a rookie Sam Laporta, uh, Luke Musgrave, maybe they really impress week one, week two. Feel free to add them. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my strategy. It's really just Kelsey Waller or Okonkwo plus one of those other names. So uh, just kind of wrap up here. We'll run through just kind of the general strategy. Where where do you draft quarterbacks? You're a guy who likes to kind of wait till the last minute to get a QB, right? 
I mean, that's always worked out well for me. So last year, my must draft quarterback was Justin Fields. The year before that it was Jalen Hurts. Uh, I had MVP bets on Lamar Jackson. His MVP season had him on just about every single one of my teams. That's always worked out really well for me. So this year, if I'm going to go that route, and you don't have to, uh, if I'm in a standard league or a half point PPR, I do want to draft a top seven quarterback. But if not, then I want Anthony Richardson or Daniel Jones or both. If I'm really waiting, uh, that's because in fantasy football, a cheat code is this rushing hyper mobile quarterback uh, it's rushing yards rushing ch- touchdowns are just worth so much more than passing yards passing touchdowns and i really feel great about both of those names daniel jones he was you know qb10 by fantasy points per game despite only 15 passing touchdowns only three fewer rushing yards per game than josh allen he now has john josh allen's old uh, offensive play caller uh, he had the worst offensive line the worst receiving core in football last year. Both of those are going to be better. And then Anthony Richardson. I mean, it's just easy. This is like the biggest freak athlete of any quarterback ever. Uh, he was hypermobile in, in college, uh, over 10 yards per carry. And uh, I really like his head coach and play caller, Shane Steichen. He helped Justin Herbert set NFL rookie records for passing yards per game, passing touchdowns. And then Jalen Hurts, you know, really productive runner, a uh, top three fantasy quarterback over the last two seasons with Steichen. And then, you know, if Jonathan Taylor doesn't come back, if he gets traded, if he has this holdout, uh, I see them having to really lean heavy on Anthony Richardson's legs. But that's that's going to be a great thing for fantasy. All right. So CEO of Fantasy Points, Scott Barrett, thank you for joining. Everybody, listen to the advice. Go out and win your league.